Hey crafty friends, this is Chelsea. In today's video, I wanna talk about those big projects that you have waiting to be done, where you have a ton of photos and maybe you're completely overwhelmed, uh, you just don't know where to start. And this could be anything from like a wedding, a vacation, uh, a certain time period in your life. This one that I'm showing you is a family vacation from when I was a kid. I didn't have a ton of photos, so this is maybe a little bit more embellished. And this is called an extended story. It's something that I learned from Stacy Julian, and she designed a collection of products for Close to My Heart, all around this idea of basically creating chapters in your scrapbook. So this story here is all about my pets that I've had through my lifetime. So there's way more story because each pet had basically a side of a page protector and I had stories about each of these pets. I love the look of all these different sizes of page protectors all stacked together. It feels very interactive, very interesting to look at. Of course, I had to put some flip flaps in here and I was able to put in quite a few photos and a lot of story into this. And it's just fun because you have like chapters of your life or chapters of a story. You could do several of these if you went to like different countries on your vacation or that sort of thing. Now I want to start with showing you how I'm going to deal with my photos first. So I'm going to be scrapbooking A Week in My Life, which is an Allie Edwards project from last year. This was my first time doing this project. And honestly, I've put it off because I had so many photos. I didn't count exactly but I think I probably had at least a couple hundred photos from the week. So it went from like Monday to Sunday and I got pictures from my husband's phone as well. And I took a ton of pictures. And as you can see, there's like multiples of shots as well. So this is my main uh, iPhoto library on my Mac. And I have created an album called Week in the Life. So I'm gonna drag in all the pictures into Week in the Life that I think I might wanna use. So I'm choosing the best shots. Some of them I have like a portrait or a landscape because I'm not sure which direction I'm gonna need if I want portrait or landscape. And I narrowed this down from like hundreds of photos to I think it was like 96 photos, something like that. And I'm still gonna narrow it down from here, but this was my initial take that huge amount of photos and get it a little bit smaller. So from the computer, we're gonna come down to pen and paper. On the left are the Week in the Life handouts. So I got those off of Allie Edwards' blog. If I can find them, I will link them for you guys. One side is a schedule and the other side is information like what you ate, observations, overheard, gratitude, favorite moment, things like that. This is my favorite uh, book that I use all the time when I'm planning things, when I'm planning classes, sketching things out. Don't mind that this is super messy but this is my process for how I'm gonna narrow down my photos to what I print. So I start sketching out what are the different sizes of page protectors I'm gonna use, what orientation do I need my photos to be to fit in those page protectors, and then how much am I gonna allow myself to do for each day, right? So that's kind of on this paper where I'm narrowing everything down to and cutting down the number of photos I'm gonna print even smaller. So I've decided my first page protector is going to be the four by six landscapes. And then I have a six by 12 flip flap, which is actually gonna be the first thing that you see. This flip flap will go on top of that page protector, which is really cool. And uh, I'm excited to show you how this is gonna to come together. And then after that, I'm going to have a little six by six page and I'll do that front and back. And then that will be the end of the first day. Now I've gone ahead and done the same thing for Tuesday where I kind of looked at what photos I had to work with and I decided I'm going to use this one that has three four by fours. So front and back, I kind of figured out what was going where. And then I have this one that has six uh, portrait three by fours. Now I'm gonna give you a quick look at the different products that I'll be using or that I have on hand that I could use. All these memory protectors are from close to my heart. They're six by six, eight and a half by 11. Uh, this is the, the style that I really like, which is the portrait three by fours. Unfortunately, that one is retiring. So if it's still left on the website, I will make sure I link that below, but it's not gonna be available for long. 
And then we have the four landscape three by fours and then the three four by fours. And then these are three four by six landscapes. And then I seem to be out of, there is a portrait four by six with like two on it, but I don't have any of those. And then of course I have some flip flaps. These come in super handy to squeeze in extra photos, extra journaling. I love those in all forms of scrapbooking. Now for all the pretty things. I have all of these stickers and paperboard, which is like a thin chipboard embellishments from a current special. It's called It's the Little Things, and it is only on until the end of February. I just love this because it has a whole rainbow of really pretty colors that I thought would go with all kinds of photos really well. I mean, I have a little girl, so a lot of her clothes have colors like this in it. Um, and I have lots of outdoor shots. So I got the one that's meant for card making, which is this one. And then also the scrapbooking one. Uh, there's a mini album, a scrapbook kit, and a card kit. And so I just picked up a few things that I thought I could use for this project. These are the papers. They are six by six, which actually works out for doing pocket scrapbooking really well. And again, I love the palette. Right, bright colors as well as black and white and lots of rainbow patterns. All the things that I love and I thought would go really well with a whole week full of pictures. And here are the paperboard accents. This is from the mini album set. And then I also have the scrapbooking one on here. I didn't get the card making, but I thought these had really good neutral words, neutral shapes, hearts and arrows and stars and things like that and the little frames I thought would work out really cool with this project as well. And these are like a chipboard, but they're thinner. So that also works great for pockets because you don't want any anything too thick because it kind of makes your pockets go all weird and bubbly. Uh, and then these, of course, are beautiful flowers, butterflies, can't go wrong with that. Some of these titles are maybe a little bit too big for this project but I can always save those to use on a scrapbook page. I'm definitely gonna be using the flowers and the butterflies. If I could get whole packs of just those, I definitely would. I would stock up because these butterflies are absolutely gorgeous. So now that I have narrowed down, kind of planned out in my sketchbook, what I wanna do for the first couple of days, I'm taking the page protectors and just sliding in the photos to the places that I know they're going. So the ones are, that are going on the top side and the ones that are going on the back side. I'm just sliding all of them in to give me a starting point. I do find doing a larger project like this uh, a little bit overwhelming. So I just trying to break it down into little steps, right? Just put the pictures in, then go back and just work on one side and then work on the other side. If you're using a collection of paper that all coordinates together, then you don't need to worry about everything matching because it's going to automatically match being in the same collection. And you can see I do have lots of different colors in my pictures. So something like the It's a Little, the Little Things collection that has basically rainbow colors is perfect for me. Uh, I'm figuring out what's going to go in flip flaps here because I had some extra photos and I didn't want to do another whole page protector. So by using these three by four flip flaps, I can squeeze in just a little bit more, a little bit more journaling, a little bit more photos. This one at the bottom from Walmart, I actually ended up not using because uh, it was starting to look a little bit too much. So that is the kind of the juggling of what is too much, what's looking too busy, and you just don't know until you get there. Now I have pulled out this new Moxie alphabet. I had not used this yet, so I was so excited. This simple serif, um, I'm using the lowercase alphabet dies here, and I'm going to do like a mixed, kind of like mixed font title for my front of my flip flap here. So I kind of figured out what I was gonna do. The word life is cut on the Cricut with an offset. The in the is with that simple serif, and then the week is white embossed on Lagoon cardstock with that Moxie alphabet. Oh, and then the dates that are on the yellow cardstock, I just printed those on my computer. I love the look of a mixed title like that. And this is a six by 12 piece of white cardstock. And then I also cut these little borders. I believe they're a Paige Evans cut file. And I just cut them out so that they were six inches wide. 
and now I'm figuring out what's going to go underneath of them. I wasn't liking that blunt edge of the paper next to the more organic edge of the cut file with all the leaves. And I'm just looking to see if maybe I should put something else under there. And I really liked this text pattern. So I'm going to end up just doing a little strip of it. Same thing, ripping the edge. And then I'll just adhere that to the back of that rainbow stripe. Just breaks up the color a little bit. And uh, it was just that little something extra that I needed there. I am repeating the same things at the top, except I made that top section a little bit smaller than the bottom. I didn't want them to be equal. I wanted everything to be a little bit closer to the top than the bottom and have that top one just a little bit more narrow. And I like the balance of that a little bit better. Now for these little individual die cut letters, I thought the easiest thing would be to line them up on my Versamat. I'm using that grid line. I know it's a little bit hard for you guys to see, but in person, it's a little bit easier. Then I grabbed a piece of washi tape and I'm just gonna pick those up, test out where I want them, and then I can leave them on the washi tape while I put glue on the back and then just place them where I need them to be. Rather than trying to do each letter and get them all evenly spaced, uh, the only thing I would have done differently is taken my T ruler and drawn a line of where I wanted them to be because it was a little bit tricky making sure they were straight with the washi tape and I think it would have been easier just to draw like a pencil line first before I went to put them on but it all worked out I added on all my letters everything is flat and then I added some pop dots with those butterfly stickers just to fill in little gaps here and there and add some movement on my title page here this is going into the flip flap and so it's gonna flip open to the right. And I love this nice, big, bold title. When that's in my album, you'll definitely know that you're entering a different project. So this flip flap is gonna be adhered to the front of this pocket here. So this pocket plus that has the four by six landscape photos, it's gonna stick right on the top of that. Uh, but now I'm going to pull in that page protector. So as I'm designing the back side of my title page, I can kind of keep on keep in mind what's going to be on the other side. This was a little bit of a challenge for me. I'm not going to lie because I don't usually design in this narrow of a format, right? Six by 12 is a really strange page size for me. I don't do that a bunch. Usually I'm doing like 12 by 12 layouts. So it was a little bit strange, but I figured out what I was going to do. All of these blocks of patterned paper are uh, four by six. So I basically just divided the page up into three sections. And I also have three photos. Now I debated what I wanted to do with those photos. If I wanted to kind of stagger them down the page, one on the right, one on the left, one on the right kind of thing. Or if I wanted to more cluster them together. And this is what I ended up settling on. I'm just gonna kind of offset them so they're just kind of on angles going down the right side of that page. The Moments title is from the paperboard set. It's part of a larger title in that scrapbooking set, uh, but I wanted just the Moments because uh, if I added any more, it looked too heavy and too much for this narrow page. The Days of the Week, I'm going to use the Moxie alphabet to do that. So I'm going to use the abbreviations because it's quite a big alphabet and if I spell out Monday, um, it's just going to be too much and it's in black. So I just think it's going to be too busy and hard to squish everything in there. So now that I have kind of an idea of where everything is going, I'm going to start embellishing and figuring that out. It was a little bit more of a challenge of like, where do I put everything? I'm not used to scrapbooking in this format. Uh, but I really like how it ends up coming together. So I'm figuring out where the paperboard accents are going, where's my journaling going. That uh, blue tag there is cut from Glacier cardstock, and I used this like stitched tag die from the Fancy Tag set, and I'm just going to be handwriting my journaling on there. I did quite a bit of playing around with those butterflies because I wanted them to look even on the page and kind of figure out where, where it would be balanced. I wanted to make sure that I had enough embellishments, but I want, didn't want them to completely take over the page. I still wanted my pictures 
to be the focal point and I'm going to be doing my journaling on this tag and I just thought I'd throw a little bit of this white ribbon in there to kind of finish off the top of that tag instead of putting like a butterfly or anything up there. And then I decided I need another point of embellishment. So I have my title along the bottom and I have my kind of two clusters of flowers and butterflies. And then I wanted something in that top corner. It was just looking a little plain. So I thought, you know, like flags or banners would be a really good idea. So I ended up kind of making this slightly bigger so that I could squeeze a fourth banner in there. I wanted to put the dark pink one up there. So then under the left hand side of this tag, I also stuck a few pieces of the stickers, the leaves, and then also a flower over top. And then I was coming in with my tea ruler to do my journaling and I was like, do I want this straight? Do I want this kind of following the tag so it's kind of crooked going down? I decided to go with journaling so that it's straight on the tag, but it's actually kind of crooked on my page, if that makes sense. So I do this quite a bit for my journaling. I will use my ruler and a pencil and just sketch in some lines. I am going to be mixing both uh, typewritten journaling, so journaling I've done on my computer and printed out, as well as handwriting. It just depends. I don't have any like hard and fast rule. Unless there's like a lot I have to say, then I'm definitely going to type it up on my computer because that's the only way it's going to fit in a smaller spot. But it just depends on the individual thing. I took my type journaling here. This is going to be the back of a flip flap. And I'm using scraps of the papers that I've been cutting just to fill this in, add a little bit of embellishment. I love that rainbow stripe. Like a rainbow stripe paper is my go-to. If I could buy that, buy like the paper packs, like just have packs of rainbow stripe paper, I would love that. So I'm using every single little scrap of that that I can. I don't want to waste any of it because there's only two sheets in this pack. So I think I used the majority of it right off the bat on my first couple of pages, but I love the look of a good rainbow stripe. Now, as I'm finishing this up, you can see I have stuck this on the back of my photo. When I'm doing pockets, I like to stick the two sides together because then you don't have that shifting and having like little bits of white sticking out and the back side of your photo sticking out. I just think it looks much neater and cleaner if they're stuck together. I topped off this photo with a couple of stickers just because I wanted some little bit of embellishment on there. And I probably should have trimmed down my piece just a hair on the edge because it was a tight fit into this <laughs> flip flap, but I got it in. It was fine. And then what I like about these is there's adhesive strip on the back side of it. So you just peel off the covering on the adhesive and you stick it right onto your page protector. It's super easy. Now remember on the bottom on that Walmart photo, I told you I had changed my mind on using the flip flap because it was just gonna be too much. Too much going on, this was getting really busy. Uh, so what I'm using is just a leftover strip of paper, one of the stickers from the card making sticker set, and I'm gonna pop a little bit of journaling on there, not a whole lot. Same thing, I use my T ruler to draw the lines, and then I'm using my black Le Pen to do the journaling. I love these pens. Uh, they're the Le Pen and they're just nice and small and easy to hold and they write so easily. If you're enjoying this video so far, if you could give me a thumbs up, it really helps out my channel and lets YouTube know to show my video to more people. I would really appreciate it. So now I have finished off everything on that side. I'm flipping over to what's going to be on the back side of this. I haven't stuck anything in yet. I'm just figuring out my back side of that page protector. And I'm looking for a little frame for this photo. The picture of me doing the dishes was taken from a ways away. And so it, I was able to crop it right down to fit in this little frame. That's from the paperboard set again. And a lot of the things that I'm doing in these pockets is I'm just using scraps of things I have already cut. So I'm just going along, figuring out where everything is going to go. These stickers are not quite six inches, so I just cut it to make it stretch and fit. It's gonna be covered up with the photo anyways, so I just made sure I trimmed it where it would be hidden by that. 
I decided I'm definitely going to use this frame, so I'm just going to use a little bit of liquid glue and then stick my photo behind the frame. And that worked out really good. I used a very thin line of glue so I didn't get oozing over the edges. And then I have to figure out what's coming next. So lots of times when I'm scrapbooking like in 12 by 12 format, I have an idea of how the page is going to come together. I kind of have a plan. For a lot of these pockets, I was just going with, okay, what size of paper scraps do I have? What stickers do I have? And it came together quite organically of just what I was working with, what I had. It was about this point that I realized that I was working on the back of a photo and I wanted to cover up that white photo paper. So I grabbed some more of the pattern paper. This is a really nice, subtle, like black and white pattern. And then I can actually start sticking everything down and I have a little spot for my journaling there and that little cherry sticker. And then some of my photos I did want to embellish or add little words to. So this one I just used a couple of stickers. And this says, love you friend. And I'm just going to stick it on the photo where I want it and then just trim it off. I didn't get as close to that black friend as I wanted to. I ended up with a little bit of just the tail end of black on my sticker. But... It's really subtle. I don't think anyone besides me would notice. And now I grab the journaling strip stickers. And I love these because they're all pre-cut stickers. You do your journaling on them and then you cut them down to size for your project. They're super easy to use. And uh, I was just writing one quick little line of journaling about my work that day. And now I'm ready to put everything into the page protector, which is always the super satisfying part. That's the part I enjoy seeing how it all comes together. I think quite often for Week in the Life, uh, Allie and other people like on her design team and stuff do mini albums and you could definitely do that. But I like the idea of this fitting in my yearly album, just going right in there with all my other layouts. And it's a little bit different pictures than I usually show and more of the everyday stories instead of like the bigger events or the personality pages. It's more like a snapshot in time of what we're doing and what life looks like. I also wanted to mention to you guys that this upcoming weekend, the creative design team is doing a two day event. It's free. There is a separate Facebook group for it. And basically we're all gonna be doing mini classes. So there'll be seven mini classes. There's going to be giveaways, challenges. It's just going to be a whole lot of scrapbooking fun. So if you want to bring all your scrappy friends and come join us, like I said, it's free. So come on over, watch some classes, participate in some challenges, and just have a good time with us. I'll have all the information and the Facebook group linked down in the description box for you. You can see here I am putting on my big 6x12 flip flap. It got a little stuck in the middle there, but the nice thing is until you really burnish this on, it's easy enough to pull up and move around until you get it perfectly situated. But look at that magic. When you open it, it's like opening a book. I love it. Uh, and then you have my other smaller 3x4 flip flap that I can just flip up and the seam just kind of disappears there right into uh, my page. So that is going to be the first page and that's the majority of what's happening for Monday. I had a couple other things I wanted to talk about from that day. So I am going to be doing this little uh, six by six page that's going to be the wrap up to Monday before Tuesday starts. And again, I'm grabbing the scraps of papers that I have been using. Like I said, I used a lot of this one rainbow stripe paper and I'm working on a six by six piece of white cardstock, just figuring out how big I want everything to be, cutting it down to size, didn't really have a plan letting the strips of paper kind of dictate where everything was going. What I really enjoyed was having a set of embellishments that wasn't huge, right? I had two packs of stickers, I had two packs of the paperboard, and then the paper. And then I could always die cut things or stamp things if I wanted to, but I didn't want it to get too complicated because I already spent quite a bit of time figuring out my photos, right? Narrowing down what are the stories I want to tell from this day? What are the photos I want to use to tell those stories from this day? So that's where I kind of kept the bulk of my effort was in the figuring out the photos and the stories and the format, right? Like what size page protectors do I need? 
that's where a lot of my energy went. So when it came to actually decorating, it's a little bit more minimal. It's not as involved as maybe I sometimes go on my 12 by 12 scrapbooking, but I don't think it needs to be. It's in the smaller format. There's a lot more things all squished together. So simpler is maybe better. I mean, you can do it in however you feel comfortable, but I found that this worked really good for me. And by having my embellishments restricted to this small collection, I wasn't looking at my entire stash of stickers and my entire stash of embellishments. So that kept me focused and uh, made it easier to make quicker decisions. So if you find that somewhere where you get stuck or you get overwhelmed, maybe you're fine with picking out the photos and the format and those kinds of things, the stories you wanna tell. But maybe it's once you get to the embellishment that it completely overwhelms you or selecting the papers by narrowing it down, be like, here's the few things that you have to choose from. You can make something pretty from those few things. I also knew I didn't want anything really bulky in here because I don't really enjoy really bulky things in pocket pages. So I'm just working with what I have in front of me. And we'll see by the time I get to the end of this week, uh, I might need to add in a few things if I'm running out of stickers from this initial set, but I mean, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I did end up matting this photo with Lagoon cardstock because I felt like it needed to pop from the background. And now I'm just figuring out where I want this little uh, sticker strip to go, and I liked it right over the middle of that word love, so it hid where you could see the photo mat showing through. And then of course I'm gonna do my, my standby, my <laughs> tea ruler with my pencil, because I'm just gonna write my journaling in here beside the stickers. All right, so here is my project. So I did go ahead and do Tuesday off camera. This video is just gonna be Monday and Tuesday because I wanted to spend some time showing you how I work with my photos, how I plan out my project, how I narrow things down. That's the part I really wanted to show you, but I'm gonna show you the two days that I have done so far. I would love to hear in the comments if you would like to see more process videos for the other days, or would you just like to see the finished project? So once I make all the rest of the pages, would you like to see just a flip through of the whole project to see how it turned out? I realized I didn't show you the backside of this day that, that was still Monday. I had a four by six photo, a little strip of that rainbow paper, and then I just typed up some gratitude for the day. And that was the end of Monday. So now I have Tuesday and I made a little collage with some morning photos. And then I also did a collage of some, like us going to the park on a walk kind of photos. I added a little sticker there and then a block of journaling also typed because I had a lot that I wanted to fit in talking about my daughter's favorite park. And then on this side, I did one card kind of embellished just with simple pattern paper, some stickers. And then that pink journaling card is actually from a party time picture my life set. I will link it down below as well. And that another year older, it was my dad's birthday that day. So I grabbed that one from those pocket cards. The colors are actually a really good match. So I added a little bit of stickers. Um, and then my journaling, um, the bottom two pictures there, my journaling I actually did before I printed my photos. So that writing is right on the photos, which is another great way to get some journaling in there. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you want to see some more scrapbooking videos, you can just click this playlist on the screen. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.